In today's homework video, we will be covering the final branch of government in the United States, the judicial branch. Please title your notes and watch and listen as we dive into this last branch of the U.S. government that interprets the laws for our country. Article 3 of the Constitution gives powers to the judicial branch. This branch decides if laws are constitutional. That means that all laws do not go against what the Constitution says. The judicial branch of government is made up of judges and courts. The judges and courts have the job of interpreting the laws. That means reading through laws that are made and making decisions about how they are fair in real life situations. Remember, the judges do not make laws. They review laws. They also only make decisions on actual cases where someone has shown that they have been harmed. Draw a judge next to your notes about what they do for our country. There are many different tiers of judges and courts within this branch. Federal judges are not elected by the people. They are appointed by the president and then confirmed by the Senate. There is a hierarchy of federal courts in the United States. This is a great visual that allows you to see what cases go right to the Supreme Court for a ruling and which cases have to work through each lower court to eventually make it up to the Supreme Court. At lowest level are 94 U.S. District Courts, which cover different regions of the country and handle most federal cases. Above the District Courts are the 13 Courts of Appeals, which is the intermediate level in the federal system. It has 12 regional circuit courts and one in Washington, D.C. At the top of the judicial branch is the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has the final say about any case. The United States Supreme Court building, federal judges, are appointed for life. They can only be removed from office by death or by impeachment from Congress. This is to allow judges to make decisions based on their conscience and not on what they feel they need to do to get reelected again or liked by a certain president. There are nine Supreme Court justices on the Supreme Court. The odd number of judges means that there will be no tie. They meet in this building called the Supreme Court Building, which is located behind the Capitol Building in Washington, D.C. You don't have to write their names down, but you should be familiar with them as they are your Supreme Court Justices. Justice Sotomayor, Justice Alito, Justice Kennedy, Justice Kagan, Chief Justice Roberts, Justice Ginsburg, Justice Gorsuch, Justice Thomas, and Justice Breyer. The Supreme Court doesn't have a lot of trials. What they mostly do is review cases that have been appealed from the lower courts. Not all cases that are sent to the Supreme Court are reviewed. Around 7,500 requests are sent to the Supreme Court each year, and they, are, they only consider around 150 important enough to review. So you may be wondering, why does the United States have three branches of government and not just one or two? It's a great question with a great answer. Reason? To protect the United States. Each branch of government has just as much power as the other two branches. This way, each branch keeps the other two in check. So no one branch gets out of hand and starts bullying the others to make decisions for our country that would hurt it in the long run. Draw a picture next to your notes of the three branches of government and each of them balancing one another out and keeping one another in check. Here's how it works. Congress approves the presidential nominations and controls the budget. How the money in the United States is spent. It can pass laws over the president's veto and can impeach the president and remove him from office. The president has power over Congress, though, and can veto congressional legislation. The president also has power over the judicial branch because he or she gets to nominate judges. However, the judicial branch keeps the president in check just as much and can declare the presidential acts unconstitutional. The judicial branch also keeps the legislative branch in check. They do this by having the power to declare any laws that are made in Congress as unconstitutional too. 
The legislative branch keeps the judicial branch in check as well. The Senate confirms the president's Supreme Court nominations, and Congress can impeach judges and remove them from office. The checks and balances are written in the Constitution for a reason. Shared power means that no one person or group is in charge of the whole country at one time. Having three parts that share power and limit one another from getting too powerful is important. The three branches of government protect the people of the USA from bad government. What does the rest of the Constitution say? Remember, there are seven articles. So let's continue. Article 4 comes next. It says how the states should interact with each other. You see, before the Constitutional Convention, under the Articles of Confederation, states were acting somewhat like their own little countries and were not working together as one big unit. The founders wanted to fix this problem, so the Constitution lays out guidelines of how the states should treat each other and interact. And that's what Article 4 is for so that they have some powers that are independent from the national government, but they also have to defer to the leadership of the federal government in certain situations. Article 5 of the Constitution lays out the steps of how to amend the Constitution. That means to add something new to the Constitution or change it in an effort to update it for the country. First, a proposal is given in one of two ways, either by two-thirds of the members of both the House and Senate suggesting the amendment, or at a convention called by two-thirds of the states. This means that over half of Congress has to agree that this update to the Constitution needs to be made. In order for the proposal to be accepted and approved, it needs to be ratified, and this can be done in one of two ways, either by three-fourths of the state legislatures or by three-fourths of ratifying conventions in the states. Keep in mind that this process has happened 18 times during the course of our country's history, as we have 27 amendments, but the first 10 were ratified together. Write down that there are 27 amendments to the Constitution near your notes. Some of these amendments have been very important to our country, like the 13th Amendment, which abolishes slavery in the United States. The 16th Amendment gives the federal government the power to collect income tax. And the 26th Amendment set the national voting age at 18 years old. Article 5 says that the or Article 6, sorry, says the Constitution is the highest law of the land, and that means state governments cannot make any laws that conflicts, con that conflicts with the Constitution. Often, this is considered the Supremacy Clause, which means that the Constitution is the supreme law over all other laws. State judges are required to uphold the Constitution, even if state laws or state constitutions conflict with it. Article 7 is the last article of the Constitution and comes at the very end, as you can see in the picture. It is also only one sentence long. According to Article 7, at least nine states need to ratify the Constitution in order for it to be applied to all the states. Write down nine states next to your notes about ratification. I will be looking for the number nine. This means that after the Constitutional Convention was over, the Constitution was not immediately our governing document. The delegates went back to their home states and began explaining the Constitution to the people living there so that when it came time for the states to vote or ratify on whether they wanted the Constitution or whether they did not want it, they would understand what it was about.